Now back in 2006, 20 year old superstarlet Lindsay Lohan was all dolled up, rubbing her nose a little bit, standing outside a nightclub called Guys. Imagine her surprise when the bouncer said denied. Now this is 2006 Lindsay Lohan just coming off mega hits like Herbie fully loaded, 144 million at the box office and of course who could forget Mean Girl. So she was a certified A-lister, certified teen idol. Left to stand outside like a commoner. So what does the entitled do in a, an event like this? Well, of course, they start to talk shit. They start to throw a fit, reportedly screaming at the top of her lungs, forcing the man that made the call himself to ban her from the club to come on down and give this little starlet a little bit of clarity. And that man is Danny Masterson. He told her directly to her face that he did not approve of her lifestyle of being this partying, druggy woman. He basically shoes her away like a dog. And then he goes back to partying and drugging women. I guess it's just not as fun if the women are just drugging themselves. This was more than just a case of a man convicted of SA. I mean, he wasn't even an A-lister by a fucking stretch of the imagination. But somehow, interestingly, garnered the power and the respect of the Hollywood elite. And after decades of abusing this power, under the hypocrisy of a holier-than-thou attitude as exampled with the Lindsay Lohan situation, it wasn't until two decades later that he was finally charged by three women of drugging and raping them back in the early 2000s. And they tried to report this to the LAPD, but something always got in the way. And we will get into that later. So how did Masterson get away with this for so long? That's the question. And why was his influence so far reaching that even Hollywood A-listers risked being canceled? They were giving him glowing Yelp-like reviews using words like role model in hopes that the judge would give Masterson a lighter sentence. Basically, if you think about it for two more seconds, undermining the victims. Now, I'm going to give you a multiple choice question. A hypothetical, if you will. Now, if you were in a loving marriage for 15 years and suddenly you are accused of rape, subsequently convicted of it, multiple rapes, but stay steadfast to your wife that you are innocent, baby. Look into my eyes as you stare into her bloodshot, teary eyes that you didn't do it. These fucking bitches are only looking for clout. They're looking for payout whatever. Does your wife of 15 years, A, believe you and stick by your side, baking a saw into a cake? Or will she, B, immediately drop your last name, file for divorce, and even dropping the entire religion? you guys were in together. Unfortunately for Masterson, the answer was B. His wife of 15 years and mother of his daughter, actress Bijou Phillips, to her credit, stood by him every step of the way during his trial. But I, I equate this to like looking at an Instagram photo of the perfect couple laying on the beach. They both have margaritas when in reality it's just orange juice and salt and they help each other take down the green screen. Once the gavel came down, his wife promptly dropped his last name, filed for divorce and left the religion that she once stood next to him by, represented proudly for years. And that religion was the Church of Scientology, which, do I need to mention, is a very controversial religion cloaked in secrecy, and their reputation was being drugged through the mud. Actually, I should say, not just, it was already being drugged through the mud, now it was being drugged into piles of dog shit with allegations and lawsuits leveled at them from different angles. Now, all the articles that I used as a source are sourced in the description, and I have to say allegedly a lot in this because I hear that the Church of Scientology is very sue happy, so everything is alleged concerning the Church of Scientology. In the case of Danny Masterson, well, let's get into that. Watch me sweat as I work for you guys. So, 
A good place to start is with Danny Masterson's childhood, how he was born. He was born in Long Island, 1976, raised in what would become a uh, actor family because he, he, since four years old, he was considered a baby model, a child model, and would go on to do over 100 commercials. That's kind of wild. Now, he does have an older brother named Christopher Masterson, and when you see his face, a lot of you guys would go, oh my God, that was his brother back to this immediate family now the mother is carol the father is peter and they would actually go through a divorce in the 80s and the mom would remarry and because of this new marriage they were given half siblings one was named jordan and the other was named alana now masterson's first big break was in a show called jake and the fat man when he was just 11 years old. Now for Danny, I guess because he was so excited about acting and modeling and whatnot, he would influence his siblings to get into the same thing. They would catch the acting bug. Now, if you remember a little hit show in the early 2000s called Malcolm in the Middle, then you might recall Christopher Masterson's face. He was the older brother named Francis, the kid that always got in trouble, was always away at some type of military camp. Now, Jordan went on to play Mark in the hit movie, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, some notable TV appearances, and Alana, she is best known for her role as Tara in The Walking Dead. Now, back to Danny Masterson. His first big break was in the movie Beethoven's Second in 1993. Now, after more guest appearances on television, he finally landed himself a more steady role on a show called Sybil, and he would play in the third and fourth seasons. But it was shortly after this that he would finally land the role that we all know him for till this day. And that would be playing Stephen Hyde in the hit TV show, That 70s Show. Now, by this time, he was already in his early 20s, 22, much older than the character that he was playing, which was in high school. But the casting, felt that he was just perfect for the role and hey i would say i would have to agree i watched that 70s show not religiously but i every time i caught it it was very entertaining characters had chemistry it was really funny and i enjoyed it every time i watched it and masterson himself i gotta say played his role perfect he was the best friend of eric foreman which was the main star of the show i believe played by topher grace now topher grace was very sarcastic i kind of remember Stephen Hyde being very sarcastic, but he was more of the anti-establishment kind of figure, the uh, hippie. But all the kids, they sat around a table, they smoked pot together while a camera revolved around each one. You know how that goes. Danny Masterson was heaped with a lot of praise for this role. He was a fairly wholesome character. It was a fairly wholesome show. There were less than wholesome things going on behind the cameras of that 70s show. And one particular story that sticks out in my mind is that of Danny Masterson and Ashton Kutcher. You gotta understand, these were grown men at the time. Ashton was about to turn 20, and of course Danny Masterson was already in his early 20s, 22, 23 at this point. And there was this little girl named Mila Kunis. And I say little girl because she literally was a little girl at the time. Lore has it, she lied on her application that she was older than she was, but she was actually only 14 years old. And according to the article that I read in Business Insider, Danny and Ashton knew that she was 14 at this time. Danny bet Ashton $20 that he did not dare slip Mila Kunis a French kiss, a tongue kiss if you don't know what that is. 20 year old men, 14 year old girl, let that sink in. And so what's a good true crime without a little bit of that old vintage video receipt that you see in your screen right now you're about to watch a grown man squirm and they're going to talk about the story that i just outlined soon you're going to see mila kunis a very young mila kunis of course but before we get into this video and our reaction i just want to say a heartfelt thank you to my patreons we're only six strong just knowing that you guys are backing me to do whatever endeavor that i plan to do here on youtube is remarkable we're technically strangers but you guys feel so close to me shout out to joseph e kbg uncool dre yan 702 tony h and last but not least mr joe nathan youtube hates monetizing true crime 
But let's get this underway. Let's see what this man has to say. What's funny is when she was she was 14 when we started the show. I was like 19, right? Right. And they're like, okay, you guys are going to be making out in this scene. And I'm like thinking like, wait, this is like slightly illegal, say, right? Slimeball producers, right? They knew exactly what the ages were by this time. But they, they, they still let it happen. Oh, your first kiss ever, right? It was my first kiss. Why don't you tell what bet you made with Danny about our first kiss? No, it wasn't the first kiss. <laughs> no, it was like a second ahead. or third kiss. It was the first. It was like the first week. No, it was not the first week. Whatever. Let me tell you. What Here's the beginning of a series of uncomfortable denials by Mr. Ashton Kutcher here, and you know she's so young. She doesn't know when to shut up. He's trying his best. Watch. He'll he'll try his best to shut her up. She does not get the point. What All right, no, let no, me tell no, you. No, what no, no. Okay, yeah. I've never kissed the guy. So I was. I was so, I mean, you know, Ash was attractive, and yeah. I was a 14-year-old little girl, and I was extremely scared for my life. Sure. And then, he, he was very nice about it. He was like, oh, don't worry. So I was like, okay. <laughs> then Danny goes to him and goes, dude, I'll give you $10 if you French kiss her. Why wouldn't you stick, my, stick your tongue in my mouth or some... What? No, 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 no. $10. You're making it sound like it was, like, really... Uh, it, okay, Dan, we had a little side bet, yeah. don't we? Yeah, like, which was... It wasn't very As to whether or not, you know, like, you know, you're kissing on the show, or boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. You would use tongue, right, Rosie? I, I mean, you would use... It I depends mean, what kind of an actor you are, I absolutely, guess. Absolutely, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Dan... <laughs> depends what kind of PDF file you are. And... <laughs> And so you're going to start to see body language speak everything. Don't listen to Ashton. Just watch his body language. That's me like 20 bucks that I wouldn't do it. And of hey. course I'm like, yeah, sure. What's the deal? You and know? then the cop showed up and he got arrested. <laughs> Those are the most tense shoulders. <laughs> Pretty much. They but should he never, have. He but never they didn't. did it. And I he so did. He claimed so to did. this day he did that. I swear. I swear. Mila, I, never, I so did it. Mila, stop talking. That's it technically what he's trying to say i have a bright future in front of me it's gonna end right now if you keep this charade going and hashtag me too cancel culture whatnot are decades away but he's feeling the pinch at this moment ever did it i didn't so let good. him i think he tried but uh, i think no, i kept my mouth so yeah on. yeah he did the old teeth block yes yeah, yeah you didn't let him do the teeth block yeah, yeah, you were like oh right. you're yes i he yeah. never got his you tongue were good. oh no you didn't you didn't ashton just admit it she dad i swear back. she's 14 no. she Okay, this is so strange on Ashton's part, okay? Maybe he wasn't thinking he's not too good on the fly, okay? So, Rosie O'Donnell basically jokes that, oh, you did the old teeth block on him, right? Okay, b before this, he's denying everything, meaning that it never happened. And now they're doing the teeth block thing, and Mila is like, yeah, I did the teeth block. And then uh, Ashton chimes in, but you were so accepting of it. And at the end there, did you hear? She gave me the tongue back, so... What is the denial here now, right? You're just proving that you've lied. Now that you can't get out of this lie, you're just going with the story. And uh, yeah, it's all bad. She did it. You stop it. She would know that was not the first. You had turned 15 by then. No, she was 12, oh, but yes, I know 15. it. There's a big difference. That one year makes the whole world change. All right, then. We're coming up with the guy. Check the body language. Legs crossed. Arms crossed. Who has a name that should have been chased for show business? <laughs> Wilmer his Vandero. soul has already I left. I don't even know how to say it. What's the point? Yeah, Danny will be here as well. Don't go away. He does not want to be there right now. At the end there, that was kind of like, a, oh, you know, I, I kind of, I, I get it. I'm, I'm so sorry, Ashton. Like I mentioned before, Danny was the oldest of the six kids that were on the show, and he was described as definitely the leader for the younger cast, and he would introduce them to Scientology, and they would go to these yearly Scientology Celebrity Center events. Yes, the church really prized their celebrities. The kids would go to these Christmas parties at the Celebrity Center. They would do plays. They be it became a regular hangout. There was an actress named Laura Prepon, and she played Donna. That was Topher Grace's Eric's girlfriend on the show, and she would publicly join Scientology. And she even dated Danny Masterson's older brother, Christopher. Now, the one holdout from this crew of kids was actually Topher Grace. As the story goes, he might have had like some sixth sense or something about Danny Masterson because he never liked the guy. And because the kids were all following Masterson, 
he pretty much didn't care much for those other kids as well. Reportedly just going on set doing his sarcastic lines and bouncing right after. So now let's go ahead and get to the beginning of the end of Danny Masterton because beginning of 2016 Netflix had a show called The Ranch. I watched The Ranch. My wife told me to watch The Ranch. I enjoyed The Ranch. She loves The Ranch. And the star of this show, I think also a producer, Ashton Kutcher and one of his best friends, Danny Masterson gets him a role on the ranch. And this is 2016, so a year later, you know, those pesky sexual assault allegations that's been haunting this poor guy all this time resurfaces, but this time it's different. This time it's sticking because they got swept under the rug for 20 years, guys. One of these women that came forward was named Chrissy Bixler. She would tell the Daily Beast that she could no longer stay silent. That the only way to protect ourselves, I think she means ourselves as in the victims of Masterson or maybe ourselves victims of in general. The only way to protect ourselves is to speak. Now, Chrissy basically says once she learned that she wasn't the only victim of Danny Masterson, she knew she had to speak up, come forward, be the spearhead for the rest of them. And it pretty much worked. Because shortly after that, another woman, Bobette Realis, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, would find the courage to reply to Chrissy on Twitter with a very disturbing tweet that read, Danny Masterson repeatedly raped me. Now the relationship between Realis and Danny Masterson was that the two had dated in the early 2000s. Now, Chrissy, excited? I don't know if excited would be the word, but glad that another was stepping into the fire with her, responded to her, you are amazing. I'm so proud of you. And just eight months later, a fourth woman would come forward. Netflix promptly did some damage control killed Masterson from the ranch, fired him. And at this moment, Netflix had already been developing that 90s show, a 70s show spin-off. And of course, Masterson was not invited. And now let's go ahead and talk about Danny Masterson's ties to Scientology. Because the three initial accusers were all part of the church. Now I put the church in quotations because the joke here is, if you have to put what you are in your name, then you probably aren't actually that. Like if a boy dresses like a girl, but he clearly has an Adam's apple, then I clearly need a little help with his pronoun. Like Cedric the Entertainer, like the prophet Cat Williams said, he does not sing, he does not dance, he does not write his own jokes, therefore he does not entertain. Now I wanted to give Cedric a chance, but I could not find his special on Netflix or Tubi. Back to the lecturette, and as the story started to break nationwide, it didn't help Scientology's already questionable reputation, as Masterson's accusers would also throw dirt onto the church, such allegations as suppressing victims from reporting it to the police. But of course the question is, why did it take so very long? Well, the answer to that, allegedly, the Church of Scientology shamed the victims and forbade them from reporting this to the police. Now, one of the victims did go to the authorities in 2004 and all that happened was nothing which wouldn't have come as much of a surprise to her at the time if she knew that they were also being accused of having some powerful people in their pockets. Another claim was that the church mediated a settlement between Masterson and herself for $400,000 to stay silent, letting her know very well that the alternative to all this was to have her life and her family's life ruined. And after several years of investigation by the LAPD, we are here now charging Danny Masterson with assault. And of course, catching some strays the Church of Scientology. Being accused of using any means necessary to silence anyone going against them. They were accused of causing property damage, libel, and even animal abuse. Now, for anybody sensitive to stories about animals, I know my wife is. I would say skip 
a couple of minutes ahead. Save yourself the heartache. Let me go into this story of animal abuse. There was a singer named Cedric Bixler Zavala. That is Chrissy Bixler's husband, the initial accuser. So Chrissy would tell her husband all about what Danny Masterson did. And like any good husband, he flies off the handle into a fiery tirade. He goes and confronts Danny Masterson personally, but nothing is to come of this because they are all part of the church. Everything gets suppressed, right? So no justice is done except kind of counter justice because they would claim that the church would systematically try to ruin their lives. They would stalk them at their home. They would send them threatening messages. They said that they were wiretapping their phones and even committing credit card fraud with their information. But the thing that destroyed them the most is when they came home and found their family dog dead. Someone had fed the poor thing rat poison and needless to say this couple is no longer a part of the church of scientology like if they were throwing out these allegations to some rando in the church i would assume that the church would just throw that member to the wolves it's because they were throwing these allegations against one of their more respected figures of scientology danny masterson and let's talk about how danny masterson became so prized. So he didn't happen upon Scientology like most people would. He literally grew up in Scientology. His family were Scientologists. And according to Danny himself, growing up in a Scientology family didn't really affect him in any way. He didn't have any types of feeling about it besides that's just the family religion, like a lot of kids. But it wasn't until he was 15 he said that it impacted him when he finally picked up Dianetics, written by their founder, L. Ron Hubbard, science fiction writer, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard believed that humans evolved from clams. The way clams, the way their, their jaws hinged is very like humans. So therefore we evolved from clams. So young Danny picks up this book and now he finds himself getting deeper and deeper and more prominent in the organization. And I'm sure the church appreciated Masterson's ability, his celebrity, to introduce their religion to more people. Now, in Masterson's own words, he said, I work. I have a family and I'm a spiritual being that likes to understand why things happen in the world and want to learn more so that I can have them not affect me adversely. So if that's weird, then, well, you can go fuck yourself. I don't know, to me, it always feels a bit disingenuous because you're basically creating an antagonist to make a point because, I mean, really, dude, who would have an issue with you wanting to be a better person, to have a better life? Nah. <laughs> It's, it's that other weird shit that people find out about. You have been convicted of rape. I'd say that drugging and raping women is very wrong. And if you, Danny Masterson, think that's weird, then you can go fuck yourself. On June of 2020, Masterson was officially charged with three women between 2000 and 2003 he pled not guilty and he was confident that they would throw this case out however preliminary hearings resulted in the judge finding that the witnesses were credible and the evidence was sufficient to support the charges and they would also specifically point out that scientology did have policies to discourage and to suppress any type of in-house information from going to the police now from here masterson's defense attorneys enacted a little bit of uh character smearing or should i say countermeasures against the plaintiffs accusing them of collusion accepting money you know that little situation with the in-house 400k or your life is fucked situation that is collusion <laughs> now masterson's defense attorney she said that all these three women they had character issues, credibility issues, motivations to lie, and that the incidences, they were so long ago. So basically adding memory issues to the litany of problems, 
So let me try to read between the lines of her words here, okay? So what she's saying, in my opinion, is, okay, girls, ladies, you were raped, right? So, I mean, getting raped is bad enough, but come on, guys, you were drugged before that, so how would you even remember that? So Masterson's first trial begins in October of 2022. He declined to testify. He declined to call any witnesses. The trial was said to have so many inconsistencies, and this was on both sides, right? Defense and offense that the jury just didn't know what to think, and it wound up ending in a mistrial. But not so fast, Danny Masterson. A new trial will begin on April of 2023, and things went a little bit smoother here on both sides. You know, they were more prepared and uh, the presiding judge allowed expert testimony on behalf of the Church of Scientology, which turned out to be not so good for the Church of Scientology. But ultimately for Danny Masterson, on May 31st, he was convicted of two of those three accounts of sexual assault, with the third ending in a hung jury, and he would get 30 years without parole handcuffed and sent straight to prison now i'm i'm ecstatic as any other that this man is being put away for pretty much the rest of his life right he's pushing 50 already 30 years and probably pushing 80 by the time he gets out but my first reaction if i'm to be honest was damn 30 years for two rapes now i only say that because i covered a case back in the day thomas shiro he knocked on a woman's door in Indiana. She opened the door. He, I forgot what the problem was. He probably said he had a broken down car needed to use the phone. She was nice enough to let him in. He says he needed to use the restroom, but by the time he came back out the restroom, his pants were down below his knees with a full erection. He would go on to rape and murder that poor girl. And I'm gonna tell you, He's out today, working at some factory. And that's murder. So I would say 30 years for two beeps sounds excessive, but I've... Okay, let's go into like conspiracy theories somewhat, okay? Let's get into the weeds a little bit. I think there was just some unspoken thinking. In 20 years, this cannot be the only shit Danny Masterson has done. He's a repeat offender, obviously. He was getting away with it. I mean, think about it. The prosecutor didn't even pursue uh, a retrial of the third woman's claims because 30 years was more than sufficient. So why waste time? Is Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, Wilmer Valderamo, you know, Fez, are they a part of Scientology? And all we can say is... Who know? The Church of Scientology is pretty much cloaked in mystery, like I said before, and that's by design, okay? They don't just put out a list of our most influential members, okay? They don't make available this list, and unless they want to make it uh, known, like Laura Prepon, or like their most famous, Tom Cruise, others will choose to be anonymous, but they will give subtle clues, like sticking up for the church, or coming to the aid of a known Scientologist, when they are charged with rape, but definitely they have some sort of ties to the church. If attending yearly Scientology functions is any indication, then we can make our own assumptions. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't affect someone else's quality of life. I mean, this is America after all. Bottom line, as long as it doesn't hurt others. Now I'm gonna leave you with one last thing, pushing you further into the weeds with me and you know weighing on the conspiracy side and that is a simple fact that masterson whether f or a he is a celebrity his siblings are celebrities his best friends are huge celebrities and all this wrapped around a controversial church which i assume is what the news the fake news gossip mongers tabloids th this is what they all wish for Right? So when the news broke, countless outlets were writing their articles and social media, mainstream news all blowing up. They all did their part to feed the public what the public wanted. But when it came down to the trial itself, okay, the media coverage, the only way to describe it was 
underwhelming. Now, just think about the Danny Masterson case when it came down to the actual trial. Doesn't it feel like there's some type of void in our memory? Like when you try to recollect the most important parts of the case, and maybe it's just me, but it felt suppressed. It felt like the media machine that can easily sensationalize and grip the world about an entitled woman who decides to hit her pirate playing husband could probably, if they wanted to, produce a narrative that completely blows the doors off Scientology and paint Masterson as probably the worst man alive since Hitler. Now, if they wanted to, they could do it. And I guess that is the point of it all. If they wanted to.